Young and Ace and the ATK gang have attracted a lot of attention over the past few months with their track, Who I Smoke. The song exposed the world to their beef with the KTA gang, led by the rapper Fulio, which has led to multiple murders and extremely disrespectful songs. Here's a look at the life and career of Young and Ace up to this point and what made him one of the most feared rappers in Duval County. Ace had a pretty rough childhood. He was born in East Chicago, Indiana, but moved with his family to Florida while he was still young. He has 10 other brothers and his mother struggled to support the family. They were constantly on the move, getting evicted from apartment after apartment, moving in with family or living in hotels, and doing whatever they had to do to get by. Ace's father was in prison for most of his childhood and he didn't end up meeting him until he was around 17. Ace has said in interviews that growing up, his family struggled so much that he never had fun in his life. The only things he and his siblings had to entertain themselves was music and the streets. Ace took to rapping as a way to escape from the difficult circumstances. Early on, he was inspired by artists like Lil Boosie, Kevin Gates, and Michael Jackson. But coming up in Jacksonville, he was also surrounded by crime and poverty, and he quickly adapted to his environment to survive. He got sent to juvie a few times when he was younger, but didn't get locked up for anything serious until after he started rapping. With his father locked up, one of his uncles became like a father figure to him. But his uncle died when Ace was around 14, which is when he started getting serious about the music. He got his rap name from his uncle, who compared him to Ace from the movie Paid in Full. Being one of the youngest in his family, the youngin' name just stuck. Youngin' Gang was also a music group that was founded by some of his older brothers, which Ace joined later on. In 2017, he released the track Go to War along with the Youngin' Gang, which started to build him a buzz in the city, getting 100,000 views in the first week on YouTube. He dropped his first solo single, No Witness, later that year and started building a name for himself as one of Jacksonville's hottest up-and-coming artists. Although Florida has produced plenty of superstars over the past few years, most of them were coming out of Miami and Broward County. No one from Jacksonville had really blown up on a national level and Ace was in a good position to represent the city. But his beef with another popular rapper from Jacksonville named Fulio is what would make the whole world check out his music and learn about their violent beef. In 2017, Ace was arrested and charged with accessory to a crime after the fact for serving as a gateway driver during an attempted robbery. The charge stemmed from a 2016 home invasion and his friend Deontre Thomas, aka Trey Shorty. Trey allegedly attempted to rob two people who were selling weed. During the robbery, he let off several shots which went into a nearby apartment building. No one was hit, but the bullets just missed a 12-month-old child who was sitting in a high chair eating dinner. Ace served as a getaway driver and was considered an accomplice in the shooting. He was later arrested and spent almost a year in jail and was sentenced to 31 months of probation. While in jail, Ace told DJ Vlad that one of his homies from Young and Gang snitched on him, which led to the group going their separate ways. Uh, nah, it, it moved part before then. Like when I went to jail, let's go, uh, well, Somebody had told, one of them had told him. Trey Shorty would avoid getting arrested for the robbery until he was brought in for a different crime that would spark the war between KTA and ATK. Trey would eventually get picked up for the murder of Zion Brown, Fulio's cousin. According to witnesses, Thomas threw a brick through a sliding glass door of the victim's home and started shooting into the living room. Zion Brown, as well as his two sisters, were all shot. The girls survived, but Zion did not. Zion Brown was the only adult in the home along with two teens, a nine-year-old and a six-year-old boy. Trey would eventually be found guilty of the murder and be sentenced to life in prison. DeAndre Thomas was the shooter. They charged him with murder. KTA and ATK were already beefing at that point, but things weren't all that serious. After Zion Brown was killed, it was an all-out war. His murder wasn't just a normal gang hit where they caught an op lacking out in public. Trey Shorty targeted Zion at home in the middle of the night and just started spraying the place up, hitting his little sisters in the crossfire. So it's understandable why KTA took it personal. There's no evidence to suggest that Ace was with Trey the night he marked Zion, but the cops said they do believe he had an accomplice. Because Ace and Trey Shorty were clearly cool and running around in the streets together, KTA may have assumed that Ace was the other person there. Or maybe they knew they couldn't get to Trey because he was locked up so they went after his homie. After getting out of jail for the robbery, things were looking up for Ace. He signed a deal with Cinematic Music Group and was in a good position to do big things in the industry. But in June of 2018, Ace's life would change forever after he was the sole survivor of a drive-by shooting that left two of his friends and his blood brother 
dead. 18-year-old Trayvon Bullard, 19-year-old Jacoby Groover, and 18-year-old Royale Smith. They lost their lives late last night. After Zion Brown was killed, Julio and the rest of KTA were out for blood. Around that same time, Ace reveals in an interview that the ops had already shot up his house once before, but they missed their target. This used to be my room right here. One boy shot my house up. I was right there on the bed, me and my little brother Quan Quan. And then shot my house up from right here. Then, on June 5th, 2018, Ace, Quan Quan, and two of their friends, 23 and 4, went out for a birthday celebration at Wasabi, a Japanese steakhouse in Jacksonville. It was 23's 18th birthday, and Quan Quan, who was Ace's closest brother in age, had also turned 18 a few weeks before. As they were driving away from the shopping center, another vehicle pulled up alongside them at a stoplight and started letting off shots. In an interview with DJ Vlad, Ace said that he tried to shield his brother from the bullets with his body, but it didn't make a difference. I ain't gonna lie, I tried to like, like shield my little brother, 20 P. It was his birthday. So I tried, I tried, to, I tried to shield him and see, make sure he was good, but I couldn't shield everybody though, you know what I'm saying? But I tried to shield him and get out at the same time. He was the only one to survive, even though he was hit eight times and the three others passed away. The murders of Quan Quan, 23 and 4, which turned Ace's heart cold and forced him to direct his rage at Fulio and the rest of KTA, leading to a string of retaliation killings. To make the whole situation even worse for Ace, he would end up getting arrested for violating his probation while in the hospital recovering. Police say Kenyanta Bullard, who is also known by his rapper name Young and Ace, is charged with violation of probation. The rapper's face was shown on the Jacksonville News during coverage of the shooting, and a retired military officer who ran a gun store on University Boulevard in Jacksonville would recognize him from his picture and submit an anonymous tip to the Crime Stoppers online. He said that Ace and his homies had come into his shop earlier that same day. Even though they hadn't bought anything, they all played with the weapons. The owner said that he remembered Ace specifically because of his distinctive hairstyle. Ace was still a convicted felon and still on probation from his previous arrest, so he wasn't allowed to possess a weapon. Police checked the surveillance footage from the gun store and found footage of the rapper holding one of the weapons. Even though he didn't buy the gun, which he couldn't do legally anyway as a felon, it's still considered possession if you hold a weapon in your hand. It seems like the cops were afraid that if the rapper was let back out on the streets, he might seek revenge. So they arrested him for violating his probation, and he was sentenced to 12 months in prison. But he was set free from jail later that month and required to stay on house arrest for the next six months. During that time, Ace would focus on music and release his debut mixtape, Life of Betrayal, in 2018. After that, the war in Jacksonville was in full effect and both sides would continue to go at each other in songs and in the streets. In February 2019, Ace's right-hand man and main shooter, K. So, allegedly killed Fulio's 16-year-old brother, Bibby, in the parking lot outside of his apartment complex. Gunfire erupts inside a northwest side apartment complex. It leaves this 16-year-old dead. Neighbors say that the shooting sounded like a war zone. K. So would later be arrested for the murder of another KTA affiliate named Lil Buck the following year and charged with Bibby's murder while locked up. A local rapper linked to a violent gang in Jacksonville is in jail on two separate murder charges. Hakeem Robinson was charged in connection with the 2019 murder of 16-year-old Adrian Gaynor Jr. Check out our video on K. So, Young and Ace's shooter, for a more detailed breakdown of his involvement in this ongoing war. A few weeks after Bibby was killed, Ace survived another shooting that left one of his people dead. The rapper and his crew were staying at a Hampton Inn in Waycross, Georgia when they were ambushed by another group. Around 3.30 a.m., guests at a hotel reported an attack going on in the parking lot. Police arrived to find one victim dead by the pool and another suffering from a gunshot wound inside one of the rooms. The man who died was named Rollo and both victims were friends of Young and Ace. Three men were later arrested, and it was determined that they were from Jacksonville, making it clear that it was payback for the beef with KTA. Just two months later, in May 2019, ATK would get their revenge for Rollo's murder and go after Julio's friend, Tiki. Tiki was shot and killed in a tan SUV not far from the Hilltop Apartments where Bibby was murdered. Not long after that, Zion Brown's sister was also shot 14 times for identifying Trey Shorty as her brother's killer and agreeing to testify against him in court. She survived the shooting, but was left in critical condition. An ATK affiliate was arrested for the shooting, but later released after he was able to provide an alibi. But it just shows how out of control the beef was getting, and even innocent family members could get caught in the crossfire. While all this was going on, 
Ace was focused on the music and would leave the street business to K-So and other members of the ATK crew. Around this time, another KTA affiliated rapper named Lil Nine was gunned down in broad daylight. The rapper was the passenger in a car that was driving down Atlantic Boulevard in Jacksonville. Another vehicle pulled up alongside him and fired 12 shots from a rifle into the passenger door, hitting Lil Nine and causing the driver to crash the vehicle into a nearby rim shop. The driver who survived would record a video inside the shop and post it to social media, letting the ops know that things were about to get ugly. But K So would turn around and use this video to mock Lil Nine, reposting it with the caption, boys want to cry now, with a bunch of emojis. He would then take the disrespect to another level by making a music video for a track, Been Dead, that featured a tiny version of Lil Nine, created with visual effects, getting put in the microwave, and then into a blunt that K So smokes. The move was extra savage because Lil Nine wasn't just K So's op, he was his blood cousin. But to Queso, nothing was off limits, and he wasn't gonna miss an opportunity to taunt his ops, even if he was family. Not long after the Lil Nine murder, Queso would end up getting arrested for the murder of Lil Buck. While locked up, he would also be arrested for Bibby's murder as well. He's currently fighting both cases and is being held until the trial. This means that KTA lost his alleged main shooter, and Young and Ace would have to continue on without his right hand man. A week after Queso was officially charged with Bibby's murder, Ace and his homie Spinner Benz, Wapa with the Choppa, and Fast Money Goon would drop what many consider to be one of the most disrespectful songs of all time, Who I Smoke. The track samples the classic pop song A Thousand Miles by Vanessa Carlton. In the music video, the four rappers are messing around on the golf course while smoking cigars. Even though the beat is catchy and upbeat, the verses are a lot more aggressive and contain several references to dead KTA members. The worst is the chorus, which is sung by Young and Ace and features the phrase, who I smoke, followed by the names Bibby, Tiki, and Lil Nine, three of the most high profile murder victims in this beef. The song immediately went viral and currently has close to 25 million views on YouTube, receiving both support for its creativity as well as criticism for its blatant disrespect of the dead. There is something extra sinister about making that kind of song over such a cheerful instrumental, but it caught people's attention and brought the beef to a whole new level. Fulio followed up with his diss, When I See You, which remixes the song of the same name by R&B singer Fantasia. The track has a similar vibe, with Fulio disrespecting the dead, while also singing a catchy melody. To make it even worse, he printed out a picture of Quan Quan, 23, and 4 from the news coverage of their murder, and can be seen rapping to the poster throughout the video. It seems like both rappers are trying hard to outdo each other by creating the most disrespectful music possible aimed to go viral. These two songs captured the world's attention and brought both rappers into the spotlight. Both sides have continued to release music and capitalize on their viral opportunity. As of yet, there haven't been any major incidents of violence between KTA and ATK since the tracks popped off, but with so many lives already lost and so much disrespectful music already online, it seems like only a matter of time before something else happens. 